So, good morning and welcome back to uh, NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, we have been discussing many total synthesis and today we will discuss uh, one of the classical total synthesis of a natural product called Langifoline. So, this uh, Langifoline is a sesquiterpene as you can see here it is a hydrocarbon and it was obtained from pine resin as an oily liquid and the name itself was derived from uh, where from it was isolated. It was isolated from a pine species called Pinus longifolia. So, that is why the name was given as uh, a longifoline. And if you look at this molecule from synthetic point of view, the major challenges are first of all it is a tricyclic compound 1 and it has two quaternary centers. Okay. It has two quaternary centers and three chiral centers and what is more important was here there is no functional group other than the double bond. Only you have a double bond as a functional group other than that you do not have any other functional group. And as it is a hydrocarbon again uh, not only isolation of this molecule but also synthesis of this molecule is quite difficult because of its volatility. There are three total synthesis which I am going to discuss today on Langifoline and the first synthesis I will talk about is reported by uh, E.J. Corey and then second synthesis I will talk about uh, re was reported by Opulsor and the third one uh, was reported by W.S. Johnson. First let us start with the total synthesis reported by E.J. Corey. So, how did he do? Uh, what are the real retrosynthetic disconnections he has cleverly used to make this Langifoline. See, if you look at this molecule, obviously the first retrosynthesis, first disconnection should be to introduce the double bond. Now, it is easy, isn't it? So, you can easily think of making this double bond as the last step. That is, if you can have this ketone, if you can synthesize this ketone, then it should be possible to do Wittig reaction or you can add a Grignard followed by dehydration should give the natural product. So, now the next problem is you have one functional group. Sometimes when you look at a natural product, if the natural product does not have a functional group, then what one should do is you should introduce a functional group because always you need a functional group in the product so that you can use that functional group as a handle for further disconnections as well as functional group transformation. Though this particular structure has a functional group that is carbonyl group, but still uh, Corey felt one functional group is not sufficient, it is better to introduce one more functional group. So, that is how he introduced another functional group which is also a carbonyl group. And the reason for introducing another functional group is if you look at this, the relationship between these two carbonyl groups are 1 phi. So, when you have 1 phi diketones, which I am sure you would have seen in uh, synthesis of elan mesher ketone and other uh, enones it can be prepared by Michael addition reaction. Okay? It can be easily prepared by a Michael addition reaction. So, here I have given a numbering. So, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The way I have given this numbering was I am going to redraw this molecule as well as do a disconnection. So, the disconnection is suppose if I remove this, if I disconnect this bond what you will get is this one. Okay. So, now you are going to generate an anion here okay, that will be enolate. That enolate will add to this double bond. Okay. Basically, it is a Michael reaction. Okay. Now, you have 6, 7 fused string. So, whenever you want a larger ring or medium sized ring, one reaction which you can think about is ring expansion reaction. Say normal rings are 5 membered and 6 membered. So, if you want to go beyond, so one can think about ring expansion. So, what Kore thought? So, let us start with two 6 6 fused rings. Okay? So, you can see here one 6 membered and another 6 membered. Now, he wanted to carry out a ring expansion reaction to get 7 membered ring. So, what he thought? If you know, he wanted to use a well-known pinacol pinacol rearrangement and the problem with this dial, okay, if you have this 1, 2 dial 
and if you want to carry out a pinacol pinacol and rearrangement okay if you want to carry out a pinacol pinacol and rearrangement then this tertiary alcohol only will be protonated okay this tertiary alcohol only will be protonated so what you have to do for the ring expansion you have to make the secondary alcohol you have to make the secondary alcohol as the leaving group then the seven member ring formation is possible and this can be easily obtained from wieland mischer kit okay so when i discuss the real synthesis i will talk about how this ring expansion was thought and how he successfully could do it okay so his synthesis actually started with wieland mischer ketone it's a racemic one then the ketone you have two ketones one is a six member ketone other one is a enone okay between enone and the ketone one can selectively protect the ketone with ethylene glycol in the presence of acid so now you have protected the six member ketone here so now you can carry out the wittig reaction on the enone so simple wittig reaction gave this exocyclic double bond with a methyl group okay so the stereochemistry as you know it's a mixture does not matter so next step is the dihydroxylation you have an internal double bond and an external double bond so one could selectively dihydroxylate the external double bond with osmium tetroxide okay so now he has got basically the key precursor for the ring expansion key precursor for the ring expansion in three steps from known wieland mischer ketone okay so now the key problems which i you know mentioned that is you have to do the ring expansion okay when you want to do the ring expansion as i said the protonation will take place only at the tertiary alcohol so if you use any acidic condition for the rearrangement to take place then ring expansion will not take place so what you have to do you have to go you have to modify so what one can do is if you can make the secondary alcohol as a good leaving group okay secondary alcohol as a good leaving group then this bond can migrate this lone pair will come here and this bond can migrate that will lead to the formation of seven member ring so that is what he did so what he did was he took this diol and then made the secondary alcohol as a good leaving group so by converting that secondary alcohol into tosylate okay so now you have made the tosylate then it was easy so he treated with the perchlorate in the presence of base like calcium carbonate then as i said this bond migrated and gave the seven member enone okay so now if you look at this enone the double bond is still not in conjugation okay the double bond is not in conjugation so for the key intramolecular michael reaction to take place for the key intramolecular michael reaction to take place first this double bond has to come here then you have to remove the ket okay so what he did first he removed the ketal to get back the ketone okay now the double bond was isomerized with triethylamine Um, and heat it you just isomerize the double bond so that gave the key precursor for the intramolecular michael addition now if you look at this molecule okay so we have to draw in such a way that you can see that this carbon is closer to this carbon okay so that is very important so i draw this in such a way now you rotate this okay you rotate this by 90 degree okay you rotate this structure by 90 degree so now you have this structure this structure i ask you to visualize like this bicyclic system okay if you look at this bicyclic system you can see here this is this is the cyclohexanol okay the cyclohexanol and here is written like this now this hydrogen is alpha you can see that is then this methyl is alpha yes now you have the seven membered ring yes that is beta you have the seven membered ring now when you look at this molecule you can see carbon x carbon x is near to carbon y 
that is the beta carbon of the eno. So, this tells that from this confirmation you can make out that it is possible to carry out an intramolecular Michael reaction and that is what they did and treated with strong base it generated anion and Michael reaction worked very well to get this tricyclic compound. Okay. So, now you have got the core structure okay, so with 2 carbonyl groups so 1,5 diketone and as you know what needs to be done is you have to introduce one more methyl group and remove this carbonyl then you have to do Vitic reaction on this carbonyl group. So, these are 3 things left for the completion of longifolin. 1 introduction of methyl group, second removal of the carbonyl group, third conversion of carbonyl into a double bond. Okay. So, first it was easy to introduce uh, the methyl group okay, with a very strong base uh, sodium titan group, then quench with methyl iodide. So, you could introduce the uh, methyl, so the, all, the dimethyl group was uh, put in proper place. Next you have to remove this carbonyl group selectively in the presence of other carbonyl group. So, between these 2 carbonyl group and this one is sterically you know hindered ok, it is sterically hindered position. So, it is easy to protect the other carbonyl group. So, it was protected as dithane derivative and as you know when you have a dithane derivative you can reductively remove so that you can get the corresponding CH2. So, uh, before that the carbonyl the other carbonyl was reduced because that should not interfere in the removal of the dithane. So, once you reduce the ketone to alcohol then the dithane was removed with the sodium and hydrazine and to get the CH2. So, now what is left you have to oxidize the secondary alcohol to ketone then convert the ketone into double bond that will complete the total synthesis of longifolin. So, that is what he did. So, treatment with chromium trioxide oxidized the secondary alcohol to get the ketone. So, then the Wittig reaction actually was not successful. So, he has to uh, do the other, other method that is normally you can use either Grignard or organolithium species. So, he tried methyl lithium addition to this ketone. So, that gave the tertiary alcohol and that was treated with thionyl chloride pyridine to get the exocyclic double bond and that is how he completed the total synthesis of longifolin. So, if you look at this synthesis uh, reported by uh, Corey, um, this synthesis started with uh, the commercially available and well known VLAN Mischer ketone, it is a bicyclic compound and the key reactions which uh, Corey used were intramolecular Michael Michael addition and the formation of 1 2 diol first formation of 1 2 diol selectively on one of the double bond followed by rearrangement ring rearrangement of the 1 2 diol to get the 7 member ring overall uh, he took about uh, 15 linear steps uh, with an overall yield of 2.8% so that is uh, quite uh, decent considering the uh, natural product and this was the first total synthesis so now we will move to the second total synthesis uh, was, which was reported by Wolfgang Opalser um, in 1978 and he used a very, very interesting uh, photochemical reaction followed by group fragmentation as key reactions to construct the core structure of uh, logifolin. And as usual the first disconnection was same as uh, the case of uh, uh, E.J. Corey that uh, he disconnected the uh, double bond and the ketone can be easily converted into the double bond using methyl lithium and followed by dehydration. And this ketone again uh, you can see he introduced another ketone okay, like what E.J. Corey has done and the next step is the one which he literally you know uh, is different than what E.J. Corey has done. Now, his idea is to use a grob like fragmentation. So, if you see this uh, tetracyclic compound his idea is so if we do the ring opening ok it is like push pull system ok when you open this 4 membered ring that will lead to the formation of 7 membered ring ok. 
and when you have the 4 membered ring obviously the 2 plus 2 photochemical cycloaddition reaction only should come to your mind and that is what he thought as the precursor for this tetracyclic compound. Okay. So, now you can see there is one double bond here and another double bond these two should undergo an intramolecular 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to give this tetracyclic compound. Okay. And this can be easily obtained uh, from this uh, you know this is uh, same compound this can be easily obtained from this cyclopentene carboxylic acid. Okay. So, his uh, starting material is uh, quite quite simple and in few steps uh, he thought he can easily achieve the synthesis of Largifoli. Now, let us see how he really executed his retrosynthesis in the synthesis of Largifoli. So, he started with uh, cyclopentene carboxylic acid and treatment with thionyl chloride converted the carboxylic acid to acid chloride and this acid chloride upon enamine reaction enamine reaction with this particular enamine derived from cyclopentanone. The cyclopentanone on treatment with the morpholine um, will give this enamine, this enamine upon treatment with this acid chloride basically what you are doing is you are doing the acylation reaction, okay. you are doing the acylation reaction next to the carbonyl. Okay. So, once you have this 1,3 diketone. So, this is 1,3 diketone is not it 1,3 diketone and this 1,3 diketone you can selectively enolize. So, what he did he not only enolized but also protected the enol as CBZ. Okay. So, CBZ is a good protecting group as you know for MH2 and uh, OH. So, now he protected that enol as enol OCBZ the CBZ is nothing but benzyl oxycarbonyl okay, benzyl oxycarbonyl okay. and that can be easily cleaved under hydrogenolysis condition later whenever it is required you can use hydrogenolysis condition to cleave that BZ group. Okay. So, this can be drawn like this as we have seen in the retrosynthesis. So, did the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition work? Yes. So, when you tried this uh, intramolecular photochemical 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction so, which we can also call it as a D mayo cycloaddition reaction. So, this reaction worked well. So, exactly as planned, he got this tetracyclic, tetracyclic compound. Okay. So, now what is left is to cleave the protecting group, the CBS, CBZ should be cleaved, and then followed by graph fragmentation should give the 7 member tree. So, it was cleaved under hydrogenolysis condition as I said it is uh, nothing but this O C O O benzyl. Okay. So, as you know hydrogenation it will cleave the benzyl and then carbon dioxide will also will go and you get the corresponding OH. Now, this will open up to give the 1 phi diketone. Again as we plan the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition D mayo cycloaddition worked well and also the ring expansion the growth fragmentation also worked very well to get the core structure. So, now if you look at this tricyclic compound this is the core structure of Langifoli. So, what is required is this should be converted into dimethyl group and this should be converted into CH2. Okay. So, it is easy. Now, you do a Wittig on this particular less exposed carbonyl group as you know this is the other carbonyl is slightly hindered. So, it is easy to do a Wittig reaction on the less exposed carbonyl group. So, you get the double bond then you do the cyclopropanation you do the cyclopropanation on this double bond to get the cyclopropane once you have the cyclopropane as you know you can hydrogenate to introduce the dimethyl group the cyclopropane is converted into the dimethyl group. Okay. Now, only two reactions are left one this hydrogen this hydrogen should be converted into methyl group then you have to remove the carbonyl group. So, simple treatment with LDA and methyl iodide so that is the only place it can go. So, methyl group was introduced then as reported by Corey do a methyl lithium addition to the ketone to get the tertiary alcohol and then treat with thionyl chloride pyridine you get the corresponding double bond 
and that is the natural products. So, that is longifolin synthesis and if you look at the synthesis reported by Opal sir, uh, it started with the commercially available cyclopentadiene on carboxylic acid, but what is more important was two key reactions uh, which actually assembled the natural product core structure quickly. The one was DMAO photochemical 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction and the second was grop like fragmentation. Overall yield was 23 percent which is very good and uh, the number of steps taken to complete this molecule was 11 steps. So, 11 steps with a overall yield of 23 percent is really very very high. Uh, so, this is one of the best synthesis of langipoline reported so far. Now, we will move to the third of third synthesis uh, which was reported by W. S. Johnson. Actually here um, his total synthesis based on his 70 meters observation of his polyene cyclization. Johnson has reported several polyene cyclization which is like biomimetic cyclization. Uh, he was inspired by nature's uh, uh, many cyclization. So, he has developed many biomimetic cyclization. So, during his report when he was working on this polyene cyclization, so he was trying to uh, cyclize this particular E9. So, his idea is this OH will be a good leaving group. Okay. So, then this double bond will migrate and this will attack and finally, a nucleophile, nucleophile will neutralize the positive charge generated here. So, when he treated this with uh, uh, stannic chloride, what he got was as expected this cyclist product. So, the mechanism is simple as I said the OH was protonated. So, now the water is a good leaving group and followed by migration of the double bond and the triple bond. So, you can get the bicyclic compound. So, bicyclic, car bicyclic compound with a vinylic carbocation. Now, the Cl minus which is formed in C2 so can attack and then get this bicyclic compound with a exocyclic double bond. Okay. Interestingly, in addition to this product, he also got another product. In addition to this product, he also got another product. So, that product is like this, that product is like this. So, he proposed a simple mechanism for this. So, first it forms the vinyl carbocation. So, before the chloride attacks, before the chloride attacks, what happens? If you redraw this molecule, if you redraw this molecule like this, you can see here. So, this is the 5 membered ring, okay. you can see this is the 5 membered ring and this is a 7 membered ring and you have exocyclic double bond with a carbocation. What he proposed was this double bond if it migrates and neutralizes the vinylic carbocation, okay, then what you get is this carbocation. Okay. Now, once you have this carbocation, simple attack of water on this carbocation should give this compound. Okay. Now, if you look at this structure, if you look at this structure, so this is the core structure of longipolin, isn't it? This is the core structure of longipolin. So, then he thought by choosing proper starting material, it should be possible to synthesize longipolin using this serendipitous observation. Okay. So, with that he wrote a proper retrosynthesis uh, as usual uh, the first uh, disconnection was to have the carbonyl group and this can be obtained from this internal double bond. Okay. So, through functional group transformation which I will discuss while talking about the total synthesis and this in principle can be obtained from this alcohol. So, if you look at the previous slide, so this is what is the intermediate. Okay. And now, if you look at this, this can be obtained from this cyclopentenone with this appended side chain. Okay. So, this can be easily obtained from this substituted cyclopentanone. Okay. This cyclopentanone can be easily obtained from cyclopentanone and aldol reaction with acetone. 
okay. So that is the starting material, so he started with this compound then carried out a 1 4 addition okay 1 4 addition with this derivative okay. After the 1 4 addition the resultant enolate was quenched with acetyl chloride, the resultant enolate was quenched with acetyl chloride to generate the enol acetyl okay or in, in other words the enolate was trapped as enol acetyl. So, after trapping the enol acetyl if you want to generate the enolate what you can do one can treat with methyl lithium. So, methyl lithium will attack the acetate and generate the lithium enolate species ok. Then when you add bromine that bromine will, will be quenched here. So, that is what happened. So, first you generate the lithium enolate by treating with methyl lithium then you add bromine you introduce the bromine next to the carbonyl group. So, once you have the bromine introduced next to carbonyl group one can easily introduce the double bond through elimination. So, it was easily done under mild condition. So, now the key starting material is ready. So, what you should do you should reduce the carbonyl group selectively to get only the allylic alcohol not fully reduced compound. So, LAH reduce that enone to the allylic alcohol and that set the tone for the key Lewis acid mediated cyclization to get the longifolin core structure. Then he treated this compound with trifluoracetic acid and as expected he got this uh, uh, carbocation and that was quenched with water to get the corresponding tertiary alcohol. So, uh, this compound is very simple you can see already has a dimethyl group you have to remove this hydroxyl and somehow you have to migrate this double bond to here as well as you have to introduce a methyl group. So, it was very easy for him to synthesize the core structure. Now, his challenges are remove the hydroxyl group, push the double bond to exocyclic and introduce a methyl group. So, these are three more things to do in the synthesis of longifolin. So, first he removed the hydroxyl group with zinc bromide and sodium cyanoborohydrate. So, that was done easily. Next he has to migrate the double bond. So, that was done by treating with paratoluene sulfonic acid he reflexed to get the exocyclic double bond. Now, you have exocyclic double bond, but how will you introduce a methyl group here? It is not straight away possible from the double bond you, have, you can introduce a methyl group. However, it is possible if you ozonalize or if you cleave the double bond to keto. So, with ruthenium oxide and sodium periodic acid you could get the ketone. Once you have this ketone the next step is to introduce a methyl group LDA and methyl iodide you introduce a methyl group and followed by like what Core and Opalser has done add methyl lithium to get the tertiary alcohol followed by treatment with thionyl chloride and pyridine. So, we could accomplish the total synthesis of longifolin. So, if you look at the total synthesis of longifolin it was though it was reported in 1975 he started with simple commercially available cyclopentanone which upon aldol reaction with acetone it gave 2 isopropylene cyclopentanone that was used as the key starting material and what is important was the serendipitous ob observation during the polyene type cyclization to give a minor product was used as a key step to construct the tricyclic compound in one step ok. One step formation of the tricyclic compound using this polyene type cyclization was the key step and overall his synthesis was achieved in 11 steps and with an overall yield of 26.6 percent. So, the overall yield of 26.6 percent is very impressive and all the three synthesis are really unique and classical in nature and these three synthesis reported in 60s and 70s considered as a real classical total synthesis. So, with this I will stop here and then we will discuss more total synthesis in the next class. Thank you.